Welcome to the Tobacco Online Policy Seminar, TOPS. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mike Pesco, a tobacco control researcher at Georgia State University. TOPS is being organized by myself, Catherine McLean from Temple University, C. Sheng from The Ohio State University, and Justin White from University of California, San Francisco. The seminar will be one hour with questions asked by the moderator and discussant. The audience may pose questions and comments in the Q&A panel, and the moderator will draw from these questions and comments in conversation with the presenter. Please review the guidelines on tobaccopolicy.org for acceptable comments. Please keep the comments professional and related to the research being discussed. Comments meeting seminar series guidelines will be shared with the presenter afterwards, even if they are not read aloud. Your comments are very much appreciated. The presentation is being video recorded and will be made available on the TOPS website, tobaccopolicy.org. I will turn the presentation over to today's moderator, Justin White from the University of California, San Francisco, to introduce our speaker. Today, Dr. Si Shang will lead a single paper presentation entitled The Ta Taxation and Pricing of Heated Tobacco Products. Dr. Shang is an assistant professor in medical oncology in the Department of Internal Medicine at The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Her research focuses on the economic analysis of health behaviors with an emphasis on how taxes and policies impact substance use and abuse. Her projects involve using both observational data and experiments to estimate consumers' preferences and demand for tobacco products. Estelle Doshi is a co-author of the paper and will assist in answering select questions in the Q&A. Our discussant today is Dr. Davil Dave from Bentley University. Dr. Shang will be presenting her research in two segments and we'll have pauses after each segment to allow for questions. Dr. Shang, thank you for presenting for us today. Thank you, Justine. Um, can you all see the slides? Uh, okay, so today I'll be presenting a study on the taxation and pricing of heated tobacco products. Uh, this is a joint work with Dr. Estelle Dauchi at the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry for the technical difficulty. Um, yeah, and so this is our disclosure statement. We have no financial disclosure or conflict of interest report. And uh, these are preliminary results subject to change. So here is an overview of uh, our presentation today. There will be two sections. In the first section, we'll be talking about uh, a tax data interactive map collected by the CTFK. We'll give you a snapshot of the current status of HTP taxes and prices. In the second section, um, uh, I'll give you the uh, a study that we conducted to um, estimate how HTP taxes are passed to prices and which will inform whether taxes on HTPs can be effective to, to regulate tobacco use. So first, I would like to give you some information on the products uh, that we research on. So the HTP products are the tobacco heating systems that heat tobacco fuel sticks that contains processed tobacco leaf to generate nicotine containing aerosol. So there are devices and heat sticks. The most common brand is IPOS, which was invented by the Philip Morris International PMI and first introduced in Japan in 2014. And there are also other HTP brands such as Glow and Plume in the market. And uh, according to the PMI Investors Relations Report published in 2021, it shows that HTPs are sold or manufactured in at least 64 countries. And also according to their uh, report, the profit margins of ICOs are higher compared to cigarettes. And both the HTP devices and heat sticks are authorized for sales in the US market. So here are some examples of the leading brands in the market. So we know PMI manufactures ICOs and their heat sticks are branded as Marlboro. And there are also other brands, for example, the BATs Glow and they have can sticks. Um, and the Japan Tobacco International has Bloom Tech and its Nivea stick. Uh, KTNG in Korea produces Leo and their sticks are branded as Fit. So um, 
there is a lot of research being done on the public health impact of HTPs. Uh, they are relatively new products and more research is needed to understand their short-term and long-term impacts. Nonetheless, we all know that nicotine is highly addictive and HTPs may contain some harmful ingredients, so they are not safe. And also we need to consider its public health impacts from the population perspective. We want to prevent tobacco use among youth, young adults and pregnant women, especially non-smokers who are otherwise would not become um, tobacco users. However, we have some evidence that HTPs are popular among young adults. For existing smokers though, uh, we know that there is some evidence suggesting fully switching to HTPs would reduce their exposure to harmful chemicals. And we know that HTPs and cigarettes may be substitutes. Mm -hmm. So there is evidence showing that the introduction of HTPs uh, to Japan reduced the cigarette sales. Um, so on July 7th, 2020, the US FDA authorized alcohols to be marketed as modified risk tobacco products. So a lot of the debate that we have on e-cigarette tax also applies to HTP taxes here. Um, so here uh, is a slide to show the uh, exponential growth of the HTP uh, global market. So we got the uh, market value data from Euro Monitor International and we plotted the trend of HTP uh, market values from 2014 to 2020. So in the left panel here, you can see that the market value of cigarettes have been trending down between uh, 2015 to 2020. In the same period, the HTP market value uh, has grown uh, exponentially. And as of 2020, the market value of HTPs reached um, almost uh, $17.6 uh, billion globally. And to put this into the context, we also plotted the trend of market value of e-cigarettes, which is shown in the right panel here. So again, we see a similar trend that e-cigarette global market also grew uh, significantly. And as of 2020, the market value of e-cigarettes um, was $20.2 uh, uh, billion. So you can see that uh, the market values of HTPs and e-cigarettes in 2020 were very close. And that brings us to the question on how to best regulate HTP products. So what a very popular policy tool is excess taxation. According to the model of taxing cigarettes, uh, taxing HTPs could be effective to reduce HTP consumption, particularly among young people, because we know from the cigarette literature that young people are more responsive than older people to prices. And also the taxes are very popular policy too for the governments because they could also bring tax revenues. Uh, and we know from the evidence in, from Korea that HTP taxation is the most covered regulatory policy by news media in the country. So uh, there are a lot of interest in taxing HTPs. However, uh, there are many challenges when considering the HTP taxation policies. Uh, the first challenge is how to best design HTP taxes to balance harm inducing and harm reducing use of HTPs. So this is a question with million dollars. Uh, there are two schools of thoughts or principles. One is uh, to tax uh, tobacco products equally. Uh, the other one is to tax tobacco products uh, in relation to their harms. So this is from uh, the perspective of a continuum of risks. Uh, for example, uh, in the United States, the Connecticut state explicitly adopts a guideline to tax products that the FDA allows to be marketed as modified risk tobacco products, such as alcohols at half the cigarette tax rate. Um, so how to best tax um, HTPs is a challenge. Uh, the other one is to uh, keep, monitor, uh, keep monitoring the market development. Um, we know that um, uh, a study done back in 2018 showed that HTPs are not less expensive than cigarettes. So we want to know whether this is still the case in 2020 for the reason that cigarette uh, price could grow due to tax increases. And we have some evidence from e-cigarette literature with more competition going on in the market, the e-cigarette prices have, has been trending down. So we want to know whether this is the case uh, for HTPs. 
And the third challenge will be we want to consider um, the uh, supply side of the market. And the manufacturers of HTPs are also cigarette companies and may strategize the pricing of HTPs and cigarettes to maximize its profits. So if you have been following uh, the top seminar, Dr. David Levy uh, gave a very nice presentation um, about how to reconsider the uh, market of um, of uh, the tobacco products, uh, changing from the concept of a tobacco market dominant by cigarettes to a nicotine and a tobacco market with many different products. So uh, in that sense, we want to consider um, the supply side that uh, strategizes their um, pricing uh, in response to policies regulating several products. Um, so what do we do uh, in this um, uh, effort of collecting taxation. So first of all, I want to provide HTTP access taxation policy scan. So my co-author, uh, Dr. Dorothy at the CTFK has led this effort. So we want to answer the following questions. Where do we stand in uh, taxing HTTPs? What are the magnitudes of HTTP taxes and prices? And uh, how are HTTP taxes compared to cigarette taxes? Um, so, um, CTFK's interactive tax map on HTPs and cigarette taxation prices do exactly this. So uh, they have collected a database. It's available to everyone. It's public accessible. It covers 61 countries and 13 Canadian provinces. It includes for both products the following information. Uh, tax rates, tax burdens, tax, poli tax policy descriptions price information of PMI products. So those are the marble right and the marble uh, size icons and more. So here is a link to the map. And um, in the process of collecting data, we also document how countries uh, design the tax code for HTTP taxes. It differs by countries. So in terms of the classification, there are different approaches. The first one is to put the HTTP taxes into a new category. So we know 36 countries and one Canadian province do so. So for instance, they define the, the uh, HTTP products as tobacco products that are heated but not combusted during use and put it into its own um, tax category. Alternatively, some countries put HTTP taxes in an existing category and tax accordingly. So there are 17 countries that do so. So for instance, uh, HTPs are sometimes grouped with other smoking products, sometimes with pipe tobacco, and sometimes with smokeless tobacco. As of January 2021, the majority of countries have included a separate category for heated tobacco products, and the tax rate is positive in all countries covered that sell or manufacture HTPs. Uh, do the test devices. Um, so it, it really depends. Uh, some countries also apply access tax on devices or tools. And when they do, generally for any electronic devices used either with e-cigarettes or heated tobacco. In the 61 countries covered, only a few tax uh, devices and tools. So for example, uh, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the UAB. So very rarely that countries tax HTTP devices. So how about uh, taxing the heat? Um, so uh, as we uh, said, most countries do so, and they choose different tax structures or bases. So when we consider tax bases, there are several large categories. One is called specific tax. So these are the type of taxes that are based on quantities or other, or other characteristics. So 49 countries adopt specific taxes on HTPs. And uh, they choose uh, different bases too. So some um, countries, 38 countries, choose uh, weight or kilograms as the base, whereas 11 countries choose the number of sticks as the base. So this will be similar to the same to the uh, tax base um, for cigarettes in the US. So it's based on per pack or per stick. Um, some countries uh, use ad valorem taxes. So ad valorem taxes is a type of taxes based on values. For example, if you consider sales taxes, um, it's a percentage of the retail prices. So uh, that's an example of ad valorem taxes or value-based taxes. Four countries uh, choose ad valorem taxes um, for HTPs. So Dominican Republic used the suggested retail price as the base. 
Switzerland used the retail sales price as the base. Uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia used excess price or pre-tax prices as the base. Um, so there is also another approach, which is a mix of specific or the volume taxes. So we have 10 countries that do so for HTP taxes. Uh, four countries, um, several in Europe, um, have both specific taxes and of the volume taxes on HTPs, which is a percentage of excess tax value that applies on cigarettes. Uh, six countries, including some uh, four, five European countries, uh, they have both specific taxes and a the volume tax based on the retail sales price. And here we show the information of HTP and cigarette prices of a 20 stick pack. So here the uh, dark orange histograms uh, or bars are for HTP prices and the light bars, orange bars here are for the uh, cigarette prices. All these prices are adjusted for PPP, um, the purchasing power parity, the next, and also the price uh, come from the PMI uh, data book. So we have the heat price um, and also the PMI Marlboro red price here. So we can see that uh, in terms of the global average, the average cigarette price per pack uh, was $8.88. In contrast, uh, the HTP price um, was $7.43. So cigarette prices are about $1 higher. And then we also plot uh, this comparison across countries' income groups. Uh, and we see similar patterns that cigarette prices are about $1 higher compared to HT prices. And uh, some of you may ask why, there, why we see the um, prices in lower middle income country higher than a uh, higher income country. Uh, I think this may be because of the uh, selection issues. Um, we have only a few countries uh, in low and middle income group that have HTP markets. And in those markets, uh, it's likely that Marlboro products are considered as premium. So that's why we see a relatively high price here. And uh, in the tax map, we also calculate tax burden as a percentage of um, excess taxes among retail sales prices. What is it? Here we provide an example on how we calculate tax burden. Uh, and we use cigarettes in Bulgaria back in 2020 as an example. So in that year, the cigarette retail sales price was uh, 5 euro 70 cents. And among this number, excess taxes uh, were 4 euro 3 cents. So we divided the four uh, by 5.7 and we reached excess tax burden at 63.2%. Why is this important? It's because the WHO Framework Convention, uh, framework convention on Tobacco Control uh, uses uh, this tax burden measure as a recommendation of taxation. And they recommended cigarette taxes to account at least 75% of retail prices. So we want to do so for uh, the HTP taxes and cigarette taxes in our data. So here are the, how we calculated the tax burden on HTPs and cigarettes and um, compare the gap. So here uh, it's linked to the idea of differential taxes on differential products because we can use the tax burden as a guideline on how to tax tobacco products. Again, we use Bulgaria as an example. So in uh, that country, it happens to that the retail sales price for HTPs and cigarettes were the same, five euro 70 cents. Um, and among this number, uh, again, cigarette access taxes was four usual. So we reached a tax burden of uh, 63%. And for the HTPs, the access taxes uh, were one euro 42 cents. So we calculate the tax burden on HTP at 24.5% of the retail sales price. So therefore, we look at the gap and we uh, calculate the tax gap between HTPs and cigarettes in Bulgaria, which was 38.4%. Uh, so here we plot the tax burden on cigarettes and HTPs and found that the tax burden on cigarettes is higher than on HTPs. Again, um, here the dark orange uh, histograms or bars are for HTPs and the lighter ones are for cigarettes. And uh, we see that the global average tax burden on uh, cigarettes was 53.5%. And the tax burden on HTP um, 
was 25.4%. So the tax burden on HTP, um, on e-cigarettes is twice as large as on HTPs globally. And we found similar, similar patterns across different income groups. So here we also uh, show you uh, how the tax map looks like. So if you go to the website, this will be the maps you see. So here we see um, there is country heterogeneity or variation in terms of access tax burden. So in the left panel is for the um, HTPs. Um, so here we uh, plot access tax burdens and you can see the different levels. And uh, the right side, uh, it shows the map of access tax burdens on cigarettes. So this would give you a sense where uh, we collect the data and it covers most of the uh, countries and places that sell HTPs on the um, PMI um, website. So uh, it's, it was a lot of effort uh, by my co-author, uh, Dr. Dochi. So um, here's a summary of what we find from this data collection when compared HTP and cigarette access taxes. We found that HTP price per pack is similar to uh, cigarette price per pack. Um, however, the access taxes on HTPs is lower than that on cigarettes. The average uh, HTP taxes was $2 compared to cigarette taxes, which was um, $4.60. So we know that cigarette taxes are twice as large as HTP taxes. And then we calculate tax burden. We found tax burden on HTPs is lower than uh, that on cigarettes. Uh, cigarette tax burden is twice as large as HTP tax burden. And we also documented that countries use different tax bases. So there are two different approaches. At the volume or uh, specific taxes, some country also mix them and within the specific task category they sometimes use um, sticks as the base sometimes use weight and within the other volume taxes uh, they sometimes use retail prices uh, they sometimes use other values such as pre-tax prices prices we also uh, uh, found that uh, devices are rarely taxed um, and uh, by the way, the device of echoes can be quite expensive, sometimes priced at $80 if it's cheap, and uh, it could be uh, over $100. Um, so all these data sources are presented uh, in the CTF case interactive tax maps for HTPs and cigarettes. So I'll pause here and take some questions. Thanks, Z. I, I think uh, first I'll turn it over to our discussant, Double Dave, to see if he has any uh, questions for you, and then I'll move to audience questions. Great. Thanks, Justin. Um, thank you, Z. That was really fascinating, a really important question um, that you're addressing in the paper. Um, so I, I wanted to sort of ask you maybe some clarification questions or maybe what your thoughts are in terms of the U.S. experience. So I thought the global experience that you talked about is really, really interesting, right? Um, you know, you have this tax advantage that's given to heated tobacco products, uh, at least across most countries, the taxes on these new products tend to be much lower than what they're imposed on cigarettes. Um, is there any, as I know you mentioned Connecticut, I think Mike Tesco mentioned Colorado in the chat room, is there any evidence on how these heated tobacco products might be taxed in the US? So the reason I'm asking is like, I'm thinking that unlike e-cigarettes, which was so different from existing products that they did not fit into existing regulatory schemes. It seems like heated cigarettes are pretty similar to other tobacco products and that we have very broad definitions of what a cigarette is under the federal tax code, under the state tax codes, that you know, once these products enter the market, it would be very easy to just sort of treat them as cigarettes, in which case I would assume, at least in most states, they would just be imposed the excise tax on cigarettes. And that may have very large implications on what differential taxing and pricing might be between heated tobacco products and cigarettes and heated tobacco products and e-cigarettes. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that, if you could speak a little bit more to that respect. Uh, thank you. I think it's a, it's a very important question. So although you know, we know that there is a HTP market in the US, but we haven't uh, shown any data or collected any uh, tax data yet because it's quite complicated. And uh, the taxing authorities in the US can be at the state and local level. And we know from the experience of uh, taxing e-cigarettes and there are different um, um, ways of taxing them. And we see um, a lot of state variation in how they would tax um, 
alternative tobacco products. So it really depends how the taxing authority uh, in the location think. And also, uh, so I, I used Connecticut as an example because they have this clear guideline of how to tax products are uh, considered as modified risk uh, products. Uh, but other states or localities don't have a specific guideline. So my uh, guess would be they either put it into the category uh, with cigarettes or they tax it okay. with uh, e-cigarettes because you know there is a growing number of states that uh, are taxing uh, e-cigarettes. So we know I think uh, 27 states so far in the US have been um, you know taxing e-cigarettes. So very likely they would use the same philosophy of taxing e-cigarettes on um, taxing um, uh, HTPs, especially the components are quite similar, right? So there are devices and there are uh, the refillables. So in this case, it's HTP heats. So if they have thought through how to tax these cigarettes, they pretty much may um, consider taxing HTPs the same way. And also a lot of debates and arguments about you know um, differential taxes um, can also be applied here. So. Uh, I think we can learn a lot from uh, how they tax e-cigarettes yeah. <laughs> to consider how they might tax HTBs from now on. Uh, another reason why, you know, maybe we haven't seen much debate here is that HTP sales still relatively small compared to e-cigarette sales in the US. Uh, I guess that's another reason why um, we don't see uh, a lot of news going on about you know whether we should treat HTVs differently from e-cigarettes and cigarettes. But I think at some point, if there is a takeoff uh, in the sales of HTVs, uh, we'll have to consider, and there will be a debate on how to best uh, tax HTVs in the spectrum of tobacco products. Great, thank, thanks, C. I mean, yeah, this is this is definitely a case where we can look at the global experience for some some sort of you know precursor into terms of what the U.S. might potentially do if if HTPs ever take off in our country here. Um, so I, I mean, and, and feel free to punt on this because I uh, I'm sure you'll probably deal with this when you go on to empirical analysis. I, you know, I know many of us have grappled with sort of you know how to standardize e-cigarette taxes, and and there are similar issues with cigar taxes, which are measured across so many different ways. In different bases, and I know in, 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 the, in the paper you, you end up standardizing these heated tobacco taxes across these different countries. Um, could you talk a little bit more about that? But I think that would be really, really helpful to many of us in terms of you know exactly what you did and, and how did you standardize across the different bases? And especially, do you have any cases where the ad valorem tax was imposed, let's say, on the wholesale price but not on the retail price? Yeah, thank you. That's a fantastic question. Um, so uh, you know, it's uh, the good thing about stand well, the, it's relatively easier to uh, standardize HTP prices than standardizing e-cigarette prices. Very reason being the uh, the um, product acquiring here. So we can just take Icos as an example. So we know that uh, the standard weights, um, you know, how much it weights, um, and I we know that it comes in a pack of twenty sticks. So it's very similar to, let's say, cigarette pack. And uh, so therefore, and also the PMI, they do the pricing across countries. So as long as we know the prices, we can calculate based on the um, tax code in that country. So it's a relatively easy process um, as compared to, say, in an alternative scenario, we calculate e-cigarette taxes across countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and 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 further answer your question, it's Estelle talking. Um, this actually the methodology for calculating, you know, taxes at both at Valorem and uh, and specific per country, and uh, also the conversion between weight and sticks. Everything is actually uh, posted on the website. So if you go to the okay. to the yeah, there is a, a a link to a methodology as well as the source of the database, and there's also. A, it's, a description by country, so you know, in countries that are kind of specific cases, like Canada, which has a different tax in different states, we also provide additional information. And there is a glossary of term which uh, which also highlights some aspects of the of the we know what we mean by by uh, tax burden, etc. So I, I think just because we have a bunch of audience questions, Dava, we're gonna maybe yeah, we yeah, all sure. ask Actually, there's, there's great discussion there. So please, please, I'll defer to that. 
Yeah, great. Um, so one question is from Alex Lieber, uh, where upfront uh, CEO said that um, uh, they are that HTPs are not less expensive, and you also showed that graph by country income group. Um, and Alex's question is really about uh, how heating devices fit into that, and that um, because they are not cheap, that um, it, it might change the calculation. And he uh, said, for example, that in Bulgaria, um, the ICOS device is seventy euros, whereas um, the heat packs are 550 um, euros. And so it takes 350 packs to recoup the device cost and the device is rated to last one year. Um, so can you comment a little bit more about sort of how you're treating the devices in your calculations and also sort of your thoughts on relative pricing? Uh, that's a fantastic question. So the answer, short answer is we didn't take into consideration of the device price. So it was just for the refillable uh, heats. And I know that Alex has an article of the paper on how to calculate the recoup uh, time to sort of recoup the cost, upfront cost on devices. So we can pretty much do that in the future to see you know, how long it would take to recoup that um, uh, device cost. But you can see here, so there's still uh, on average a price difference of $1 per pack. So let's say if there is a tobacco user who is uh, uh, spending, uh, let's say, uh, the cost of the heat uh, and consume one pack per day. So that would mean uh, 80 days to recoup the device cost um, in Bulgaria. So um, as, as, at least we know that there is a uh, price gap between heat sticks and cigarette packs. So there's still incentive for them to uh, tobacco users, especially smokers, to consider using HTPs and uh, the cost on devices can be recouped in this case. Okay, great. So there was one question by Mike Cummings in the chat also about how Frank Chlupka wrote a paper in New England Journal of Medicine where he recommended differential tax burden for lower risk products compared to cigarettes. And doesn't the differential reflected in the data uh, you present show this? Yes, uh, the short answer is yes. So if you think about the tax burdens, uh, even the absolute taxes, um, uh, if you look at the global average tax, absolute taxes on HTVs are lower than the taxes on cigarettes. So it's about yeah. half of the taxes on cigarettes. And if you look I'd at- like to, I'd like to add, a, oh, sorry, see. Yeah, so that's why it tells the same story. Go ahead, Estelle. Yeah, I'd like to add a comment on that, uh, on that question. It's a very good question and a very important question because many countries are reconsidering taxation of heated tobacco products now. I think Frank's, uh, Frank's paper uh, was mostly talking about e-cigarettes, and uh, but uh, you know, Frank and I and other people who were also involved in a, in a kind of a, a discussion on the, as you, you might have seen also the WHO's new technical manual that was posted a month ago. Uh, the last one was 2010 and this is the, the latest one. Clearly recommends that, uh, you know, it does not clearly recommend, but it, it says that uh, heated tobacco products, because this, they are so similar and they are tobacco products to cigarettes and they look like sticks. Uh, the, you know, the manual says actually that, uh, that they should be taxed equivalently it does not say so for e-cigarettes. There is more moderation, yeah. but there is no clear answer to this day. Okay, great. Um, so I, I think maybe just one more question, then we'll move on if that's okay, see? Yes. Uh, so there's a, a question by uh, Nagar Nargis about the difference in taxes are not reflected in the differences in the prices and HTPs as your data to show, unless the price differential is significant, smokers are unlikely to switch to HTPs. How can differential taxation induce smokers to switch to lower risk products in these circumstances? Uh, that's a very good point. And uh, we are trying to answer uh, this question later on the tax path through uh, two prices analysis. But the short answer to, it, to that is to keep increasing cigarette prices to create economic incentive for switching because we do see that uh, the tax pass through rate to, to HTP prices are very, very small. So um, although HTP taxes uh, theoretically uh, can be passed to, to prices, um, 
it doesn't affect price that much. So the idea is, you know, we, we also know that the profit margins of um, HTPs is much larger. So the manufacturers, they have the room to offset tax increase. So therefore, you know, um, I think uh, the best scenario, in my personal opinion, would be keeping increasing, uh, keep increasing taxes on cigarettes. And uh, we can also increase HTP taxes accordingly. And uh, if we reach a point where the profit margin is not large enough for the manufacturers to offset the um, tax increase, so we may be able to see the taxes on HTPs make a big difference on the HTP prices. And at that point, we should be able to consider how best to tax uh, these products differently um, to create economic incentive. Right now, uh, the tax impact on HTP prices is very limited. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> After yeah, well, the second yeah why don't you keep going, see? Thanks. So we, yeah. So we'll present data supporting that conclusion, hopefully. Okay. Um, so here um, comes the section two, and um, well, we will present some evidence on um, our test pass-through rate analysis. So here, the question we try to answer is, how are HTTP taxes passed through prices? This will inform whether taxes on HTTPs can be an effective tool to regulate tobacco use and raise tax revenues. So here is the uh, um, mechanism or the, the framework that describes the tax impacts on uh, downstream outcomes. So when we consider tax policies, um, the policymakers often decide on the tax basis and the rates. And then um, the idea is that these policies would affect prices, so sufficiently increase prices. So there is this necessary step uh, for the market to pass taxes to prices. So here is a more complicated because in the, in the market, both the supply side, the manufacturers and demand side, will jointly or together impact the tax pathway rates to prices. So say if tax policy work as designed to raise sufficiently price level, that would have an impact on the downstream behavioral outcomes. For example, reducing consumption, reducing initiation, promote quaking. Of course, uh, in this process, other regulatory policies also would have impact on the behavioral outcomes. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, if the goal is to raise tax revenues, so we need to consider the tax increases and the uh, consumption reduction, and uh, their products will be the tax revenues. So uh, there are possibilities that tax revenue would increase as tax increases, and there are also possibilities that tax revenue might decrease. So that's an empirical question. Uh, but I think the key takeaway of this framework is that the prices mediate the effects of tax policies, i.e. structures and rates, influencing the behavioral outcomes and other consequences, including health impacts. So uh, that's the rationale why it's important to, to estimate tax pathway rates to prices. So there are scenarios, three scenarios of tax pathway rates. The first one is under shifting of taxes to prices. Uh, that is a $1 increase in taxes uh, leads to a less than $1 increase in prices. That's called under shifting. And uh, it could be also the case that taxes are fully shifted to prices. Uh, that is a $1 increase in tax leads to a $1 increase in prices. And the third possibility is over shifting, which is that a $1 increase in tax leads to a la larger than $1 increase in prices. So we know from the existing evidence that uh, the cigarette taxes and alcohol taxes of certain beverages are overshifted to prices. And we want to investigate here uh, what is the case for HTP taxes. So here are our data. Um, so the outcome variables that we have are the HTP prices and cigarette prices. So again, we got the prices from the PMI yearbook. So we have ICOS prices and the marble prices in our data. And these are prices per pack of 20 sticks after adjusting for the PPP. 
And the explanatory variables that we have here are the HTP and cigarette taxes per pack of 20 sticks, adjusting for PPP. And um, so we also collected data from uh, a panel data from 61 countries since the implementation of HTP taxes. So we have data from 2014 to 2020. Uh, so we are doing a cross-country comparison here. And we also have control for the income of the country, which is measured uh, using GDP per capita. So here are our salary statistics. On average, HTP price was $7. Uh, cigarette prices was $8. And the total excess taxes on HTP was $1.44. And among this total excess taxes, the specific taxes was about $1 and other alarm taxes were about 50 cents. Um, so the total excess taxes on cigarettes uh, were uh, $4.39. And among this um, excess total taxes, the specific taxes was $2.66 and other alarm taxes was $1.73. And uh, the log term of the GDP per capita was 4.69. So what we see here is that cigarette taxes are about twice larger than HTP taxes. Cigarette and HTP prices are similar. Again, the difference is about $1. Uh, the specific taxes are about twice larger than other volume taxes. We also plot the trends and saw that the cigarette prices increase over time. Uh, HTP prices remain stable over time. Um, so our empirical approach to estimate the, the tax pass-through rate to prices is difference in difference, i.e. two-way fixed effects model. So here we control for the country fixed effects, uh, which take account of um, the country's specific time in, uh, invariant impact on prices. And then we also control for uh, year fixed effects, which take account of the common trend across countries over time. And then we use simulating unrelated regressions, SURs, to examine the tax pass-through rates in a system of HTPs and cigarettes. So here, what SUR um, type of regressions do is to take account of the correlation error terms. So there, therefore, we are looking at the um, HTP prices and cigarette prices in the system. So uh, we are guided uh, by the conceptual, conceptual framework that the uh, two products um, are in the same market and manufactured by the same uh, company. So that's why we estimate uh, the whole system rather than a separate equation. Um, two of the regressions, uh, standard measures are clustered at the country level and all values are converted to PPPs. So here are the equations where we show uh, our models. Uh, as you can see, uh, here we use a very um, flexi flexible approach where we consider both the HTP taxes and cigarette taxes enter, to, enter the equation that explains HTP prices and cigarette prices. So here the subscript H uh, for HTP C is for cigarettes, I is for country, T is for year. So as you can see, this is a very flexible model that we use. We don't put a lot of restrictions on the tax impacts on prices. Um, so again, we have controls of year fixed effects, uh, country fixed effects, GDP per capita in log form. And here, beta 1, beta 2, gamma 1, and gamma 2 in the equations estimate tax path rates to prices. So in terms of coding taxes, we use alternative specifications. First, we, first we use the overall taxes. So that's combining specific and other realm taxes. And in an alternative approach, uh, we consider the two categories of taxes separately, so specific taxes versus the volume taxes. Uh, we sort of decomposing the total excess tax into these two components uh, in the specification. So here are our main results. So I will walk you through uh, this. So if we look at the first column in this table, uh, it shows um, the tax pass-through rates of HTP access to HTP prices. Um, so this is the tax pass-through rate. So we can see that a $1 increase in HTP access taxes is to a 60, 16 cents increase in HTP prices. Therefore, we drew the conclusion that uh, HTP access taxes are undershifted to HTP prices. 
So there is definitely some offsetting of uh, pricing strategy um, that passes less than tax increase through prices. And also in this equation, we don't see uh, cigarette access taxes to have a significant impact on HTP price. And then uh, we also estimate the cigarette tax pass through rate uh, in this case. So if we look at the second column, uh, so here we estimate the cigarette access tax pass through rate to cigarette prices. And here uh, we find that cigarette access taxes are overshifted to prices. So this is consistent with existing literature. And this size, um, a $1 increase in cigarette access taxes is to a $1.53 increase in cigarette prices. So access taxes on cigarettes are overshifted to price. Again, we don't see any significant effect of access tax on HTPs on, H on cigarette price. Um, but uh, when we decompose, when we decompose the excess taxes into different components, that is specific taxes versus urban alarm taxes, we saw some interesting pattern here. So if you look at um, column three, so the coefficients in yellow color here uh, are for the HTP taxes on HTP prices. So here we can see that urban alarm taxes uh, is passed to HTP prices significantly. So that's 77 cents increase. And if we look at um, the cigarette tax impact on HTP prices, we also see some interesting pattern here. So, um, um, so in this red color, it shows that cigarette at the volume taxes is passed to HTP prices. So that's also interesting funding um, when we look at different uh, tax bases. And in column four here, uh, we pay pretty much do the same thing and decomposing the taxes into different components. And here we see that uh, HTP at volume taxes actually are positively uh, in, um, impacting cigarette prices, um, but specific taxes decrease it. And when we look at the cigarette specific versus the volume taxes, um, we see that both are passed to cigarette prices, but uh, the volume taxes are passed at a higher degree. So those are our primary results. Um, so in addition to this, we also conducted some uh, alternative regressions. Uh, so here we also regress the price gap on tax burden gap, the percentage, percentage difference. And we didn't find tax burden to be significantly associated with price difference. So this answers uh, Nigar's question um, you know, although we have this difference in tax burden, we don't see this uh, price differences or this economic incentive for uh, that could be created to promote switching. And we also, uh, you know, did additional regressions where we regress price gap on the absolute tax difference, and the results are very similar. Also, the coefficient magnitude is very, very small. Um, we also conducted some analysis, um, specifically event study to test parallel trends. Uh, so we look at implementation of HTP taxes, and then we basically saw the parallel trends prior to the implementation. So here are our conclusions. Um, so when we tested tax pass through to prices, we found that HTP taxes are undershifted to prices. A $1 increase in taxes leads to a 16 cents increase in prices of HTPs. And uh, consistent to the existing literature, we found that cigarette taxes are overshifted to cigarette prices. A $1 increase in taxes leads to a $1.53 cents increase in prices. Also, specific HTP taxes are larger than other volume taxes, but other volume taxes are passed to prices at a greater degree than specific taxes. This may be due to that most specific taxes are levied on weight, not on sticks. We may see different results uh, if we see countries switching to the stick-based uh, specific taxes. And we also know that manufacturers reap a higher profit margin on HTPs than on cigarettes, and thus have more room to offset taxes or undershift taxes to prices. So this is what we found from this analysis. So on the one hand, we think there is a room to increase HTP taxes and raise tax revenues. Uh, but on the other hand, there is limited impact on prices um, on the downstream behavioral outcome. 
because we don't see a change in a large change in prices. So if say the goal is to reduce uh, HTP consumption among young people, um, especially in countries where the prevalence is already high, uh, the tax uh, in the current status is the their impact might be limited because um, it's not sufficiently costly to crisis. And we also find the evidence that policymakers need to consider HTP and cigarette taxes jointly uh, because you know, we tested SUR against the separate regressions and we found that SUR was a better uh, fitting model. So this correlates with uh, what Dr. Uh, Levy uh, has said about considering uh, the responses to regulatory pol policy jointly uh, for multiple products. Um, and it's challenging to create economic incentive for switching from cigarettes to HTPs using low taxes on HTPs. Uh, the reason being that uh, we don't see a significant in increase in prices of HTPs. Uh, therefore, increasing cigarette taxes may work better to, to create a, a, this economic incentive um, and uh, to help uh, smokers switching from cigarettes to HTPs. Of course, there are some limitations and I also uh, present some ideas of the next step in our research uh, line. So the, the limitations include that we use only prices of PMI products. That being said, Marlboro cigarettes and Eichel's. We did not control for other HTP and tobacco regulatory policies. Uh, there are limited years of data due to the relative novelty of HTPs and we did not consider the influences of each cigarette and other tobacco. Uh, we did not receive intended impacts of different tax bases, such as weight uh, versus sticks. But we think that future uh, work can address these limitations, especially when we have more data to work with. So uh, we will, in the future, evaluate the impact of tax bases. We will also examine the impacts of taxes on HTP and cigarette demand and prevalence, and take a closer look at the price responses among younger adults. So that concludes my presentation today. Um, so here are our email addresses if you have any questions. Thanks, C. Um, that was great. Let, let's uh, see if Davo Dave, our discussant, has any questions for you, and then we can turn to audience questions. Thanks, C. That was really fascinating. I mean, I think it's really important to have information on what the tax pass-through is for a new product that's such an early stage of the product life cycle. So I think that was really, really important stuff. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about the fact that you're finding such a low price pass-through for these heated tobacco products. I mean, some of the lowest that we've seen among any other tobacco product. Um, does that reflect more in terms of the price elasticity of these products, do you think, or the market structure of these products, or maybe a combination of both? I think uh, it may be a combination, but I think the challenge we have is that we have very little data. So if you look at the market value trends, um, it started, the, the entry of echoes was firstly in, uh, at first in Japan, so that was back in 2014. And it slowly um, increased as um, a global market. But uh, nonetheless, we have very limited data to work with. So I don't think we have a good sense of how big the price elasticity will be. So uh, the other study, the other study that we are working on is to estimate the price elasticity using the uh, Euro monitor sales data. Uh, but again, we are still in the process of um, working on that that uh, paper. And the challenge we had is we were only able to uh, control for the country fixed effects at the time. So when we first started that style of research, we didn't have this this uh, long panel of price and tax data. So I, I hope in the future we can estimate price elasticity. Um, and um, um, another reason I think is the market structure, as you said, because uh, right now uh, we don't have good data on the market share, but we're pretty sure that uh, Icos is a brand and takes the largest share. How large, I don't know, but uh, when I read the uh, Euro monitor reports, it always says, oh, Icos may face the competition from this other brand in this country which is basically saying that Icos is taking over the entire market, although the other brands are trying to catch up. So it's pretty much a monopoly market, so far I'd say. Um, so as you know that based on the economic theory, um, they pretty much um, do the price strategy, uh, the setting the prices to maximize their profits in a monopoly market. 
So I think that's why we see uh, this joint pricing of uh, HTTP sensing rights um, in, in the HTTP market at least, yeah. Great, thanks, Lee. Um, you had also mentioned, I mean, I think for most of the talk, you mentioned the substitution between um, combustible cigarettes and heated tobacco products. And I was wondering if you talk a little bit more about, I would also think that, you know, a lot of e-cigarette users might also think about heated tobacco products as a substitute for e-cigarettes. I mean, I think the global market sales that you showed initially in the presentation, you showed like a, 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 a stagnation of the sales of e-cigarettes. So to what extent, I mean, this is, this is really interesting, right? Because if you think about where the gradient is in terms of risk levels, I might think that heated tobacco products are maybe somewhat safer than combustible cigarettes, but maybe not, not as safe as e-cigarettes, even though e-cigarettes are not fully safe. So, so what, the, what are the issues in terms of drawing sort of people into this market, both from e-cigarette user side and also from the, from the combustible cigarette user side, the smokers? Yeah, I think that's what I think from my perspective, so what I see is there are rarely the kind of had competition between e-cigarettes and uh, HTPs. So we know that in our in um, in the US, at least what we've seen is uh, e-cigarettes is taking off the use of e-cigarettes. And we don't see the HTPs are uh, significantly taking the shares of uh, cigarettes. At least I haven't seen any research so far showing that. And then we know that in East Asian countries, especially Japan and Korea, uh, definitely HTPs are taking the largest market share and e-cigarettes not as popular. So there is definitely, I think, um, um, some reason behind it maybe is the preference for the products and how they view uh, HTPs versus uh, e-cigarettes. Um, so I think more evidence is needed uh, to understand, you know, why they choose one product instead of another. And also we need to consider the, um, who would be the suppliers here, who are the producers here. And then we know that uh, the HTPs are marketed, uh, produced by big tobacco companies, and they have the resources, the platforms to promote HTPs in many countries. So what I'm trying to say is they have a better global market grasp than let's say e-cigarette producers. So we know Jew here in the US is, uh, is a very successful company and selling Jew, but whether they have a global grasp uh, in this case is unclear. So um, I think from the supplier side, there will be also differences. So that may partially explain why we see different patterns. And that's why we see the, you know, uh, the catch up of HTTP market to e-cigarette market at a global level. Although we know that e-cigarettes um, first was launched in 2010 maybe, they have existed in the market for longer than uh, HTTP products. Um, so I think we'll see um, some trends in the future. It's hard to foresee the trends, but uh, we may be able to see in certain markets, for example, Canada and the US, to see this how to have competition between the uh, two alternative products as well. Okay. So I'll defer to the audience. I know we're running out of time and there's some great questions in chat room, so. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so C, uh, a, a couple quick ones. Um, this one was from uh, very early on by Mike Cummings. Is the higher profit margin associated with HTPs versus cigarettes the result of lower taxes? Uh, that's our explanation. So the reason being, uh, we think uh, that why uh, the tobacco companies can afford such low pass-through rate of taxes to uh, HTP taxes to prices is because of the profit margin. So let's say if they offset or absorb tax increases on HTPs, they still can make a lot of profits. And we know that uh, according to a recent report, uh, the uh, net revenues uh, coming from ICOs is about 20%, if I remember correctly, of the PMI net revenue. So I think they can pretty much afford absorbing uh, tax increases. And it's relatively low anyway compared to cigarette taxes. Okay. And uh, what, th this is also from earlier on from Elizabeth Allen. Why did you take only the excise tax burden as a percentage of price instead of taking the indirect tax burden, i.e. excise and uh, VAT or GST? Uh, so the reason being that excess taxes is uh, is the policy target because the other taxes are applied to all products. 
So it doesn't really create that uh, economic incentive. So that's why we focus on excess taxes. And uh, not the reason being that uh, due to all this, uh, this framework and uh, the reason that excess taxes um, make products relatively cheaper or more expensive. So at least uh, the framework convention on tobacco control use excess taxes uh, among um, the retail prices as a um, measure of the strength of the taxation policies for cigarettes. So that's a commonly used indicator uh, to measure the strengths of taxation policies. And we follow that approach as well. Okay, great. I, I think we might be out of time then. There were a bunch of questions we unfortunately did not get to. I appreciate the audience is active participation, but I think we might then move to the closing. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are out of time. Thank you, Dr. Shing for the presentation to the moderator and discussant. Finally, thank you to our audience of 90 people for your participation. Thanks again for, your, for participating and have a top-notch weekend.